that must have felt good. You, you kept us waiting until the last jump. Yeah, that was probably the greatest feeling I've had out on doing triple jump on the track. So it's just overwhelmed at the end there. And, um, you know, I don't really normally get, you know, much celebration going, but yeah, just overrun with emotion and extremely relieved more than anything. Well, in fact, you smashed the mark in your fourth jump, but uh, the wind ruled you out. I mean, you must have known at that point something was going to happen. Yes, a lot. I knew the jump was there, and if the, if the wind, um, you know, drop below the two metres uh, tailwind that it, it could happen but at the same time I often don't do a bigger jump on my last attempt or because of the extra adrenaline you tend to either foul or go for go so big that with a triple jump you know you go out of balance or collapse or something so I was a little bit nervous to be honest but you know came together so I'm very happy. That's it you're going to London and potentially in two different events how are you going to manage that? <laughs> um, it's just something we'll work through with my coach Gary Bourne and um, we'll you know, make a decision if I'm going to do both, if I get selected for both um, later, you know, close to the Olympics. Um, the program works nicely uh, as a hypothetical if I was to do it, um, but you know, we'll just work through it and make sure I'm fit and you, know, you never know, it could be viable. Well, we've been uh, watching you all summer, you know, reaching and heading, heading towards that mark and every time it was looking more and more like you were going to get there. But how, how did it feel for you all those weeks, all those different meets around the country? Uh, it, it was painful, I guess, is, is a good word, in, in two senses, on the body and, and on the fact, you know, that it was, it, was, it was getting closer and closer and so the pressure was building and each time, you know, it was less and less. So... Um, to get it today was, you know, on, on effectively the last chance before, um, you know, you can be selected in the initial round of selections was um, was great. Yeah, and it's great uh, for you, you and your, your training partner Mitchell Watt, who's obviously also going. I mean, it's uh, it's a great team you've got up there. Yeah, we've got an awesome squad um, and training environment up in uh, Queensland at QE2 Stadium. Um, great support from uh, QAS, uh, from the whole squad from Adidas and. Uh, you know, Athletics Australia supports us well, and, and Gary's amazing. We've got a great squad of um, core squad of probably four or five of us, and we all push each other. And it's competitive, and you know, the weather in Brisbane is awesome, so you can't ask for much more. Can you see that stadium? Oh, Cheers. Even though you're living in Queensland now, you're an OMAC boy. You have a good, yeah. some good OMAC support down here. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm a bit of a nomad in athletics. I've I've been around. I'm from South Australia, and I, I lived in Melbourne and. Um, so initially I was with the St Peter's Track Club in Adelaide, Saints Track Club, and then I was at OMAC in Melbourne, and they were very good to me, and um, they're a great club, and yeah, now I'm up in Queensland, so it's nice to do it here, and probably if in front of a few of those OMAC guys. And uh, in that round six, were you ever just paying attention to the wind gauge, just hoping it would drop under the two? Was that planned, or just a bit of a fluke? Uh, I certainly was paying attention. I, uh, I, you know, you have a minute, and I, I usually use that minute to... Um, you know, either wait, for, normally it's wait for the biggest win, but today I always wait for the smallest win. And um, it dropped away and then it started to pick up just before I went. And, you know, I was a little bit scared, probably just before I took off, but, uh, you know, it worked out nicely. Mm -hmm.